I'm Jim Kircher, and we're going to start off with some pretty big news. Well, it's big news in the world of herpetology, but hey, this is public TV. Herpetology, the study of reptiles and amphibians. And well, the amphibian who made the news lives here at the St. Louis Zoo in a recreated Ozark stream environment. A hellbender named Gene is the first hellbender born here and raised in captivity to become a father. So this is kind of a big deal. It is a big deal. A lot These of little guys, they came from the eggs he fertilized and tended to in that stream outside. This was not our first story about the hellbender breeding program. A few years ago, we came to find out just what they were doing here and why they were doing it. What we came to see at the St. Louis Zoo is not on display. It's actually behind the herpetarium where they keep the snakes and other assorted reptiles and amphibians. And if you come back here on the right day, you might get to meet Irene. Not the woman in the wetsuit, that's Shauna. Irene is the big salamander she has just fished out of its nest. It's one of our female hellbenders. How old? Uh, we don't know her age, because she was a wild collected adult. She could be anywhere from, you know, 10 to 35, who knows. She is one of the hellbenders living and more importantly and amazingly reproducing in what is no mere trough. This is about your typical size of an adult. These are miniature streams with flowing water, the speed of the current, the temperature, the minerals, all carefully controlled to match the hellbenders' native habitat, the spring-fed waterways of the Ozarks. There were once maybe 10,000 or more of these guys in Missouri and northern Arkansas. But over time, for some or many reasons, they declined into the hundreds. At the same time, the survivors showed a high rate of severe injuries that hadn't healed properly, which could be due to a combination of many factors. Um, you'll notice that she's missing a, a right foot and a back right leg. About 70 to 80 percent of the animals that we find on the Ozark Rivers have got some sort of anomaly. A big part of this is simply preserving the species, biodiversity, the balance in the Ozark River ecosystem. But there's more to it than that. Hellbenders may not be as majestic or cuddly as some other endangered animals. After all, one of their nicknames is snot otter. But freshwater species are disappearing just as fast or faster. And amphibians are at the greatest risk. The hellbender has lungs, but underwater, it absorbs oxygen along those rippling folds of skin. And whatever is in the water, it absorbs that too. Think canary in the coal mine. We depend on water just as much as these animals do. So if there are problems that are inherent in the water that are impacting hellbenders and other forms of wildlife, it's going to impact us eventually too. So the St. Louis Zoo, the Missouri Department of Conservation, and other partners set out not just to study the hellbender, but to figure out how to breed them in captivity, raise the offspring, and put them back into the streams. Now catching a hellbender is actually pretty easy. During the day, you find them lolling about in their nests under rocks. But getting them to reproduce in captivity, that would take 10 years. There were so many things to get right, so many things that could and did go wrong. The zoo started with an indoor stream. The males and females were doing their jobs, but the eggs just weren't getting fertilized. Every year, the zookeepers would adjust this or that, but still, no babies. So a few years ago, they tried something else. They thought maybe an outside environment would help, and they built the outdoor streams. Roomier, lidded nesting boxes, half buried, comfortably spaced, mimicking the rock nests of the territorial hellbender but still no success. So they went back to the water itself, looking at the ion and mineral concentrations, made a minor adjustment, and then waited to see if it would make a difference. It was, I remember the date, it was October 18th, 2011. We opened up one of the nest boxes out back and there was all these fertile eggs. They didn't just hatch 63 baby hellbenders, they made history. It was the first time anybody had bred them in captivity. At this point in 2014, all of the breeding adults had been captured in the wild. Their babies would not reach sexual maturity for years, and it wasn't certain that when they did, they would be able to successfully reproduce. These are our newest babies. There are now thousands of hellbenders in these tanks. Two subspecies from two different Ozark River systems are bred separately and will be placed back into the streams where their parents were caught. 
and there they will feast on, among other things, crayfish. But they generally don't bother people. They're not poisonous, not aggressive. We're actually more interested in them than they are in us. So for us, being able to help uh, conserve a species that's right in our backyard. The Hellbender Project in Missouri is a success so far, but only up to a point. The population is being increased, but what about the factors that caused them to decline so dramatically in the first place? Was it disease, climate change, pollution, people collecting them for pets? Were their nests being filled up with silt because of changing riverbank vegetation? The zoo-raised hellbenders are being put back at various ages to see at what point in their development they are most vulnerable. And that means tracking, counting, measuring, at least for the next 15 years. Those first salamanders hatched in 2011 at the zoo and raised at the zoo only just recently reached adulthood. And this year, the male salamander named Jean, at the age of seven, became a father. The first homegrown hellbender to do that anywhere in the world. So this work is really starting to pay off. <laughs> it is, it is. It's, uh, it's been a huge success. We're extremely happy at uh, the keeper's success and what we've been able to accomplish in the last four years. Since that first visit, the Hellbender Breeding Center at the zoo has been expanded. Rooms and tanks now taking care of eggs and babies and adolescents and finally the adults. While some of the adults, like Jean, will be kept for breeding and as a backup population, the real success of the Hellbender program will not take place in tanks or in artificial streams. So after all these years, you've had a lot of successes. Things are moving along well. When would you say this is a successful program? What will be the moment when you say, we've done it? Yeah, I think um, of all the streams where we've introduced, reintroduced animals into, the key would be when we find that male guarding a nest of fertilized eggs, and we know that male is from our stock. Um, all of our animals are given a tag, uh, whether it's a coated wire or an individual ID. So when we find that particular animal and realize it's from the St. Louis Zoo, uh, that would be the culmination of all our efforts.